Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we have something very, very cool to show off actually. We have a brand new map that has been given to us by the Warhammer community and it shows off all the Horus Heresy stuff, all the Great Crusade stuff, all the big key points in the timeline, but it actually gives us new lore, new, new stuff that we didn't really know about or I didn't really know about, like the actual finding of some of the forgotten, aka lost Primarchs and stuff like that. So let's just jump in. We've got to cover it all, look at the Map, look at all the cool things on there it gives us then a more of a, a visualization of what actually went on in the horus heresy and how things went down and how we're now eventually at the siege of terror so the first thing is the primordial strain this is basically the the early stages when um the emperor is creating his gene enhanced uh, sons if we skip forward like the battle of Ariarat, again i'm probably mispronouncing these this is when the thunder warriors went down fighting and the emperor replaced them um as it states here there is rumors uh that the emperor ordered them purged to make way for his legion of starters we all know that happened apparently it was the custodies that made that happen i would love a book detailing that we have got close to it with the valdo book but not a proper proper book now if we just go on we got the path uh, the, the pacification of luna um which of course um this is where they got all the gene text and stuff like that but i just want to go on a little bit more uh, the treaty of olympus this is with mars uh, which again is another big thing that happened because without the aid of mars we wouldn't have left the soul system it's it's, it's just probably well, we probably would have but it would have been a costly engagement as it states here the primat project of course is another big thing but i'm just going to move on because the great crusade has now begun in 798.m further and the next big thing is the discovery of Horus, Cofonia, right down here, as you can see with my mouse. Um, now, this is a little bit of a spoiler. Please leave now if you haven't read the Al uh, the Alpha Legion book or the Alpharius novel. Um, Horus was not the first Primarch discovered. Alpharius was. It was just in the system or in the stats, let's say, that technically Horus was the first Primarch um, discovered. Next up is the discovery of Lehman Russ all the way up here at Fenris. Now, the next big thing is discovery of Redacted. Now, this is kind of big for me because I didn't think like... Well, I, I, I kind of knew... The Lost Primarchs were discovered, of course. We all know that. We know that the brothers knew about them. But for so early on to have one found, I think that is kind of a big thing. That means that, you know, Horus and Lehman Russ uh, must have been close to one of these Primarchs. And the big thing is, the big rumor is, of course, that Lehman Russ was sent to execute one of these uh, legions. Maybe it could have been this one. Again, that is just all rumor and hearsay for now. I personally don't believe that. But again, that's just me. But it's kind of a big thing that uh, the discovery of one of the, uh, of the lost Primarchs was actually found right at the beginning. Now, there is um, something with this map where you can't zoom in manually. So if I go this, I can't like use my scroll wheel to zoom in or anything. But if I click on this and go like the discovery of Ferris Manus and then go back to map and it zooms out and I could just stop it a little bit. Actually, let's just try that again. So the discovery of Ferris Manus, um, that is over here. And then if I just stop it like that, there we go. We No, no it didn't, didn't work again. I'm an idiot. Okay, so let's just... It, it, sometimes it does it, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, the discovery of Fulgrim, uh, Chemos, as you can see over here, um, right next... Do you know what? Everyone has landed quite kind of closely next to the soul system um i've got to say um there we go did it stop it there we go we stopped it we, yeah we, we we actually got it on the zoom in uh the discovery of vulcan um okay that's another one the discovery of dawn that's another one Rebute. if we just keep going along here because we want to get past all the discovery of the primarchs for now um angron corvus uh discovery of redacted so again an, another one of the lost primarchs um was just discovered after Korax, we don't know what homeworld it is, we don't know who it belongs to, what legion, second or the 11th, but we do know um, that it was, uh, you know, another one discovered. And of course, the discovery of Alpharius and Omegan, as I started, uh, sorry, stated at the start of this video, it's not really Alpharius, it, it's Omegan 
that was found, and we don't know if then Alpharius swapped with Omegan and Omegan became Alpharius, or, or Alpharius stayed and pretended to be Omegan, and Omegan was like, okay, I'll just stay hidden. Yeah, it's confusing. This is the Alpha Legion at the end of the day. The Great Triumph, of course, was on Ulanor. For those of you who don't know, Ulanor is now Armageddon. Yes, Ulanor is Armageddon. That's why the Orcs in 40k are so drawn towards this planet. That's why Gazgul keeps going back. It's the Orc homeworld. This is where the big victory over the Orcs um, was displayed. And we had all the Primax there on the balcony. The Emperor was there, everyone like that. This is where the Emperor announced that he is going back to Terra. And uh, Horus is basically the War Master. Um, Another big event, M31, is Nikea. This is when the, the basically it was ruled out that psychers are not allowed to be psychers anymore. Um, stop using your powers because it is very, very naughty business. Um, the Serpent Lodge over here. I'm just going to push forward a little bit um, because this is when it starts getting very, very heretical now. So, but, well, I say the Serpent Lodge is when it starts getting very, 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 very heretical because um, Horus is wounded on the moon of Davin and that's where he has a nightmare. <laughs> that's what I call it. I'm sorry. Horus has a nightmare and he basically decides to betray everything that he stood for. God damn it, Horus. Just go to sleep and have a nice night's sleep. Um, the burning of Prospero, of course. This is when Lehman Russ was sent to uh, bring in Magnus because Magnus tried to alert the Emperor uh, to what was going on, and he brought uh, uh, the, the, the like basically the Pact of Nikea. So the Empress said, like, "Go and go and get him, bring him back home." And then Horus whispered into his ear because at this time Horus has gone full traitor. He was like, "No, you should kill him. You should kill him, Lehman. Kill him. Kill him, and watch what happens." And um, you know, it's 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 Russ doing what Russ does. Um, the war in the Webway, of course, since Magnus. Um, and his attempt broke the seals on terror. The webway has been breached, and the emperor now has to sit, more or less, on the golden throne um, to try and stop the, the like this combat threat of demons pouring in um, onto terror. And that's when all the custodians go in there, uh, some of the mechanicus go in there, and there's just basically a huge, massive war in the webway. That's why the emperor doesn't get that much involved into the um, Horus Heresy. Um, we have some stuff like um, the death of Cygnus Prime. Um, this is where the Blood Angels went there. Again, sent by Horus. It was a trap. Um, Carbanda for uh, Sanguinius. He actually put him into a coma, but then, you know, with, with, with the sacrifice of one of his sons, um, he was able to come out of the coma and yeet uh, Carbanda back into the Never Realm. Um, the Martian Civil War is, again, another big thing. Mars basically goes, you know what? He's not our emperor. And, um, yeah, everything turns into that. We've got the Isfan stuff now, the Isfan free betrayal. Um, this is, this is, this is the big stuff. This is, this is, this is where brother against, well, brother, well, kind of brother against brother. It's all the legionnaires just get absolutely, um, smashed and killed and everything like that. You know, you know Isfan. You know everything that happens around Isfan. Vulcan's legion gets nuked. They get turned to ash. Um, and, you know, Vulcan starts to die re repeatedly because he's on Conrad Kurz's ship. I think he dies from a, uh, a spoon at one point, which is hilarious. The only Primarch to die from Kuttlera. Um, the Chondox engagement. Um, Wayward fighting orcs in the Galactic Fringe for five years. The White Scars discover the hand of the Alpha Legion in their misfortune. After contact with the Imperium, the re-established world, uh, the word of Horus's betrayal reaches Jagatai Khan. The White Scars make full speed to terror, smashing all the traitor forces they encounter. Yeah, so for people who don't know this, the White Scars were basically like, we're just going to go anywhere we want and fight. That was kind of their mantle during the Horus Heresy. It was trying to, it was trying to hard to catch up with the white scars but when you did catch up with him there's basically a ton of news and one of the news was like hey Horus has turned traitor what Horus fought is that Jagatai would actually come to his side but Jagatai was like no I'm not betraying the Imperium like he never really agreed with the Imperium in a way but you know he wouldn't betray his oath to the Emperor so that's why they went back and that's why they are on the um at, well they are at the siege um of terror um now this is new law for me the Imperial Fist Blockade. So, the Imperial Fist actually set up a blockade around Cofonia. And I bet your bottom dollar, this is what the new book is going to be covering. Um, that is going to be coming out uh, on Saturday. Well, pre-order on Saturday, should I say. It says, The Sons of Horus find themselves blockaded on their homeworld of Cofonia, uh, but are too heavily entrenched to be removed. The Imperial Fist maintain their blockade 
blunt several attempts to break free until, uh, well, the Legion again comes back, Strike Force arrives to break the siege, and the tables are turned on the Sons of Dawn. So that's going to be an interesting one indeed. Um, the Drop Site Massacre. Um, this is this is where it all goes down. Now, sorry, I've got confused with Isfan being the Drop Site Massacre. Sorry, let's go back to that one. The Drop Site Massacre is where um, the brothers basically turn on their brothers. When I say brothers, turn on brothers. Primarchs turn on Primarchs. Um, and the full-fledged heresy is revealed this is it the full-fledged heresy is all revealed and we are now looking at each other like oh boy the imperium sure is damned uh the succession wars um a vital space lane uh, comes under assault from the alpha legion through their sheer misfortune encounter a loyalist company of iron warriors defending it there we go iron warriors actually being cool for once you never hear me say that again. Um, the region changes hands many times over the course of five years, leaving the core, core world of Parimar 5 little more than a devastated husk. Again, that's new to me. I didn't, I, again, if, if you knew that, then you knew that. I didn't know that. Uh, the Battle of Nebula. Uh, the Space Wolves, severally depleted uh, since the burning of Prospero, are ambushed and, uh, in a dangerous uh, nebula by the Alpha Legion. I knew this because the White Scars were there and um, Lehman Russ was like, help me! Was, they were like, no, we can't. We have to go back to Terra. And he was like, god damn it. Um, Alf Alpharius himself teleports aboard Lehman Russ's ship um, but is rebuffed long enough that a Dark Angels space fort joins the battle and routes the traitor forces. Um, cool, I actually didn't know that Alpharius went on, on board the ship. Was it Alpharius? Mm, there's, there's another thing. Um, ambush at the Thal system. Now, I just want to say, the Thal system is a great victory for the Sons of Dawn. I know a lot of people are going to be coming in and they're saying, God damn it, Valrak, you absolute bastard. But hear me out, right? So what happened at the Thal system? You can read the little blurb of text here, but I'm going to go into more details with this. So what happened is that Rogel Dawn sent a retribution force to Isfan to try and help the aid of his other brothers. Um, excuse me. Uh, and what happened is that Pertrabal was lining wait for them. There was warp storms. The warp storms ripped half the fleet apart. Then Pertrabal pounced on the remaining ships. But this was led by Alexis Pollux, one of the greatest sons of of Rogel Dawn. And what then happened is that Pollux basically was turning the fight against the Iron Warriors. Now, while that was happening, a message came through from Terra from Dawn saying, no, Isfan's a trap, because by this time, they received the news of Isfan. Isfan was a complete trap. So he didn't want to send his force there to be, you know, destroyed, which it's already more or less, you know, in, in the grass of being destroyed. So all the ships start to teleport back to, or should I say teleport, start to warp back towards Terra and trying to get back to the soul system. Um, and that is like when the like his battle plan more or less doesn't come to fruition. And uh, Pollux uh, then goes into the warp and he ends up at uh, Ultramar because of the beacon and stuff like that because there's all chaos powers going on in the galaxy. Sorry if I'm summing this up in a weird kind of way, but I'm just trying to get through as much as possible. Um, but there's a little blurb of text at the end uh, where Pertra looks at his um his like calculation monitor and if the battle went the way it was going without the interference of dawn saying everyone come back um the battle would have gone the imperial fist way it never really states that but it's like i think he's like he smashes his monitor or something like that because he knew that the sons of dawn were going to kick his ass yeah i said it um the Shadow Crusade, this is probably one of the coolest crusades that happened during the Horus Erisa. This is Angra and Lorgar basically just going against Ultramar and Gilliman. They needed to keep Gilliman in his place because Gilliman basically had the biggest legion at the time. If I'm not mistaken, was it 250,000 space marines he had? Of course, probably not that after the betrayal at Kalf and everything. Um, well, let's just go to the betrayal of Kalf right now. Um, it says the Ultramarines and the Wordbearer legions answer a mustering call on Kalf. Um, only for uh, for them to be betrayed, brothers, and butcher them en masse. Um, I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, around 100,000 Marines died around Kalf. Please correct my numbers on this, but a big chunk of the Ultramarines actually suffered um, at Kalf. Um, the next big thing is the Ruin Storm. Now, this is the big one, because this basically kept most of the Loyalist forces away from the soul system from getting towards terror and what i mean by that is the ultramarines 
the uh, what's it called? The Dark Angels and the Blood Angels. They all ended up at Ultramar because this is where the warp spewed them out into. They couldn't really get into the solar system. They had this big rune storm that was blocking everyone from going. So they basically set up something called um, the uh, Secundus uh, or the Imperium Secundus, where <laughs> they thought the Imperium was dead. <laughs> They thought the Emperor died, so they basically made Sanguinius the Emperor. Um, the Lion was, like, the chief, like, general, and Gilliman was, like, you know, the chief clerk or something. Something strange like that. But it's massive, massive heresy. That's all you have to know. Ultramarine players, Dark Angel players, and Blood Angels players, how dare you betray us. We are still alive. Um, the Solar Wars going on while all this is going on. It says here, traitor ships assault the Segmentum Solar under the cover of refugee flotillas, bringing the water to Terra's doorstep. The Alpha Legion comes striking distance of the throne world and the Black Lord Pluto, only for Alpharius to meet his death at the hands of Rogal Dawn. Despite this, their command structure remains as strong as ever. Yes, there we go. Confirmation, Dawn kills Alpharius. Don't Say in the comment section that wasn't Alpharis because we all know it was Alpharis. How dare you? Um, the Framus Crusade um, is going on at this time, um, and this is basically with the Dark Angels and the Night Lords. They're going at each other's throat. Of course, as I mentioned, the Lion ends up in Ultramar after all this. Um, he actually captures Comrade Curse, and Comrade Curse escapes in Ultramar and starts doing like Batman stuff on like Ultraman killing a lot of people. Uh, capture of the perfect fortress. Uh, an impregnable fortress created by uh, Primarch Pertrabo and Fulgrim comes under futile attack by an Imperial Army cohort who are run down and butchered by the Empress children. The defenders then turn to find the Raven Guard occupying their uh, uh, vacated fortress who swiftly turn the powerful defenses weapons on their careless former brothers. Uh, what's that? An Iron Warrior fortress being overrun again? There's no news here. Um, the Siege of Baal. Now this again... This is this is new for me. It may not be new for you, but it says Baal, home of the Blood Angels, becomes a sanctuary for Space Marines fleeing Horus's rebellion. Fearing the Shattered Legions will reorganize and pose a threat uh, to his plans, the War Master besieges the planet, although every attempt to conquer Baal is rebuffed with heavy toll of traitor casualties. That is really, really cool. Um, is that covered in, in, in a book anywhere where I can read? Because I would love to read about Baal being held out by all these Space Marines from the Shattered Legions. That is... That is fantastic. Um, the space drop, okay. The Iron Warriors launch a daring void assault against the orbital hives of Vanahelm, sieging them from uh, the, uh, the Mechanicum. Space Wolves and other Loyalist forces attempt to reclaim the facilities with countless drop pod assaults, falling like the Hall of Hives, but three successful counter assaults uh, fail to achieve their goal. Again, I think that's new to me. I can't ever remember remember reading about this so all these little snippets maybe can be turned into books or something uh the breaking of anvilius again hopefully i'm saying that right the vital forge world of anvilius erupts into a war of uh of annihilation strangely the uh, the magi lords reject offers of alliance from the loyalist and traitor causes instead destroying any attempt to intervene uh, no onlookers are able to determine what the opposing faction are warring over or why the conflict began so basically just just death all right Okay, the Siege of Imwit. How dare you? Right, so Imwit, of course, is the homeworld of the Imperial Fist. Again, this is new law. So it says, dozens of traitor fleets attack the Inwit cluster, hungry for the prize of the Imperial Fist homeworld. Well, what, what, what do you want? Some ice? Do you want what? What? Do you want ice with your coke or something? Um, the siege increases steadily and intensely for four years before the War Masters direct assault on Terra draws traitor forces away, leaving a cluster of string. Uh, uh, sorry, a cluster of string of burning, wasted worlds. Again, I never knew the Inwit system ever became besieged by the traitor forces. Hopefully, this gets turned into a book. Um, the Doom of Moloch. Uh, the traitor causes commits an enormous invasion forces to the night world of Moloch, including four Titan legions. At the critical moment, the night house uh, Devin reveals its allegiance to Horus, turning the tide against the loyalists in a treacherous firestorm that spells doom for the Imperium defenders. If I'm not mistaken, the the the, the Night House um, is basically run by a lord, of course, because you know, that's that's what they do. They're all noble and stuff, and he ends up like getting off with his sister. There's some Game of Thrones stuff 
that happens on Moloch, which I don't really want to go into in this video. Um, the death of Talon. Again, one of the most epic battles that ever happened. I think it was the biggest tank battle that has ever been waged in the 40k well, say 40k, the 30k, well, I'm 40k certain. I don't think there's ever been a bigger tank battle. Um, the Iron Warriors get their ass handed to them, so it's always hilarious. Um, uh, the once uh, verdant uh, staging planet of Talon is subjected to a horrifying uh, barrage by Pertrabo, killing most of the population within minutes and rendering the air deadly toxic. Dozens of loyalist fleets respond with, with environmentally sealed armor vehicles, beginning the largest mobile arm engagement of the war. Yeah, so basically it's just a huge big tank battle, and the like I said, the Iron Warriors um, get their asses handed to them, but that's just me. Um, Cataclysm of the Iron Worlds. All right, I don't think I know this one. A belt of highly concentrated forge worlds is wrapped by... A crisis of faith over the Emperor's legitimacy <laughs> as their Omnispire, he's not our Emperor, sparking a wave of religious civil wars. Even the intervention of the Dark Angels cannot resolve the spiraling disaster. The Dark Angels probably started it. They're like, yeah, he's not really an Emperor. Um, the battles between dozens of Forge Worlds continue far beyond the Horus Heresy. Okay, that again, that's, that's kind of cool. Uh, the Grand Imperial Muster. Um, the, Ru the Runestone allows Dawn to muster many uh, formerly stranded forces at Beta Garmin. This, right, yeah, Beta Garmin is the big one. Basically, this is where they had to destroy most of Horus's big guns because if they didn't, then it would kind of just like completely ruin Terra and turn it into like a wasteland. Um, forming the largest concentration of loyalist forces in the galaxy, Horus has no choice but to respond and resulting in uh, clashes sees billions of lives lost and the might of the uh, Titanic are all but broken. Yeah, as I stated, they had to destroy the big guns because if they were let, well, if they were allowed to be let loose on Terra, then Terra would just be a wasteland. So they choose Beta Gamma instead to to unleash all the big stuff and destroy everyone. Um, Lauren Alpha. Okay, I think this is new. The White Scars and the Empress Children conduct a high-speed duel across uh, the last cr uh, critical space lines connecting Terra to the Northern Imperium, the arrival of a massive Dark Mechanica Mamada turns the tide, forcing the White Scars out of their element and ultimately rejecting the Loyalist um, from Lauren Alpha. Again, new to me. Passage of the Angels. Freed from their isolation by the Runestorm, um, the Dark Angels wreak havoc across the, soul, uh, the Southern Imperium um, of revenge against the loyal forces. Uh, a trail of blackened scorched worlds is left in their wake, including the home worlds of the Empress Children and the Death Guard. If we can just zoom into this, can, can I zoom in anywhere? Right. I'm just I'm just I'm just gonna go back in, stop it. Because we can see this now. So this is the really interesting thing. So you can see that the passage of the A uh, of the Angels of Death, this is where it comes. Um I think this is Sanguinius here coming towards Terra, if I'm not mistaken. And you can see, like, the Dark Angels. There's Chemos over there, so that's the homeworld of the Emperor's Children. And over here is uh, Barbarus. That is the homeworld of the, um, what the... What are they called? The, the Death Guard. Sorry, I'm bloody, I'm bloody speaking out my heart at the moment. Um, so, yeah, it's confirmed that the Lion goes to them and smashes them. Uh, maybe this is the Lion as well. Maybe this is some of the stuff of the line. I'm not too sure. All we know is that Sanguinius was was the only one able to force his way through, and that is why the White Scars, Blood Angels, and the Imperial Fists are on Terra. Also, the Dark Angels, but that is another story for another day, unless it mentions it here, and I'll talk about it. Um, the Serpents Call. Despite the apparent death of their Primarch, the Alpha Legion uh, uh, defy Horus orders and set up out to, out to hinder the loyalists approaching from the Galactic East. Uh, Gilliman's battle fleet is forced to intervene to prevent further losses of vital reinforcement, critically delaying their arrival on Terra in time for the upcoming siege. It's probably the best that they did do that, right? Because Gilliman would have been there on time and it may have not gone the way that Horus wanted. Well, technically it doesn't, uh, right? Um, Terra, and this is where we are now, the Siege of Terror. Um, the Amash Traitor uh, Fleet, commanded by War Master Horus, breaks through into the Solar System um, as laid defenses, smashes Battle Fleet Solar with overwhelming numbers and takes Luna at last to reach the orbit of the Throne World. Um, on the 13th of Secundus, 014.M31, the Bombardment of Terror begins. And we all know what that means. That's the Siege of Terror. I love 
this map. I love maps. I don't know about you, but I'm a huge map person. So when I see maps, I just I just have to get it. This is the map that's going to go in on pre-order on the Saturday, by the way. And I'm going to get this. I'm going to put it on my wall so I can just look at it and just go, oh, look at that planet. Oh, look at that planet. Oh, look at that planet. But it's really, really cool that they've done this. I wish they'd do this for more of their lore and, you know, summarizing and stuff like that, because I think it's absolutely fantastic. Um, anyway, I'm going to call the video there, because this is, this is, I think we're nearing like 20 minutes now or something like that, of me talking about the map and the lore and all this cool thing. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts, feedback, what do you think of the map, what do you think of some of the new lore that I've mentioned, what do you think about the missing Primarchs being discovered so early, and one like really, really late, like just before Alpharius. Um, let me know down in the comment section. And we can have a nice little talk down there, as we always do. If you want to check this map out for yourself, it's now over on the Horus Heresy website. See you now. Have a great day. And bye-bye.